Well, there's been a lot of activity around the Lodge Hall this week. Samuel Higgins, one of the older brothers, remembered the Lodge Hall in his will to the tune of $1,200. And the old Kingfish lost no time in using the money for improvements around the place. Extra money, we're going to run the lodge efficient. Half the hall, Everlot's got to have a secretary. Oh, that's different than a smile secretary, huh? What's his name? Definitely Jackson. Oh, then it's a female. <laughs> all right, all right. Now that you mentioned it, I guess that's what she is. Yes, I would say she's a female. George Stevens, you're going to fire her. I ain't having you working in no office with no woman. You, huh, with a secretary. And here I have to run out of my spare bedroom every chance I can to get house money. Now, wait a minute, honey. The large brother done hired her for me. And anyway, you know I wouldn't look at another woman. Don't forget, honey, I've been married to you for 22 years, and you done soured me on the whole female thing. George, Stevens, I said you wasn't a whole house with a female. Now, wait a minute. You got the whole thing wrong about this. This gal ain't gonna be no worry. She's middle-aged, she's settled, she's efficient. Well, George, if that's the case, I suppose it's all right. Well, I'm not even one of the large brothers would look at her, let alone me. I tell you, honey, she plain as an old shoe. Plain as an old shoe. Well, uh, I guess I'll go get washed up for supper, honey. <laughs> You? Is your name by any chance Daphne Jackson? That's right. May I do something for you? You certainly may. I'd like to see Mr. Stevens at once. I think George is busy. George? That's right. <laughs> That's Mr. Stevens' first name. See here, young lady. My name happens to be Mrs. Stevens. Do you understand? Oh, yes. I'm terribly sorry. Mr. Stevens, your mother's out here to see you. <laughs> mother? Young lady, I'll have you know I'm Mr. Stevens' wife, and don't you ever forget it. Wake up, you loafer. You hear me? Wake up. Take a letter, sweetheart. I said wake up. Oh, 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 oh. oh uh, Sapphire. I just got to look at that old shoe of yours. Old shoe? Uh, uh. Now, wait a minute, honey. I told you I had to have a secretary. Business reasons, you know. Did you have to get one with a plunging neckline? Now, wait a minute, honey. I'll tell you again. It's all business. I'm doing it for the large members. Strictly business. Yeah, strictly business. Well, all right, George. But I'm telling you something, and I mean this. Don't ever let me catch you getting mixed up with this secretary and no other woman. Do you understand? Honey, I'll give you my word of honor. I'll never let you catch me. Very well. <laughs> Hello. None of that, Andy. This is strictly business. Now, there's a honey baby doll if I ever seen one. It's handy. Hmm, you really going all out here on Brother Higgins' money, ain't you, Kingfish? Yeah, Andy, I even going to hire a scrub woman to help lighten with the cleaning. I write in the employment agency this morning. <laughs> you know, Kingfish, I was just thinking, uh, of course, the scrub woman is all right. Uh, but is you going to have enough work to keep the secretary busy? Because if you ain't, uh, I was thinking that... Uh... Now, listen, Andy, I told you this was strictly business. And in a fair time, she's going to be a public stenographer. I'm doing it as a big favor for her. Oh, yeah, yeah. Excuse me. Is you the public stenographer? That's right. I wonder if you could write up a letter for me. It's a little personal. Very well. <clears throat> 
Miss Henrietta Smith, RFD Box 42, Madison, Georgia. My dear Miss Smith, I saw your picture in the Happy Hearts matrimonial catalog and I decided that you was the gal for me. I love you. Sell your farm and come to New York at once. I know you make a perfect wife. And I also feel... Uh... Did you visit Miss Jackson? No, not now, but I had a customer about an hour ago. Oh, that's fine. Uh, take a letter, Miss Jackson. Eureka Employment Agency. Dear Mr. Eureka, colon. My secretary takes typewriter in hand to inform you that I is looking for a scrubbing woman. Period. Colon, white space, blue pad direct. I want a girl that is efficient, hardworking, neat, and unlazy. Period. Kindly send me one of the above at your earliest inconvenience. Period. Yours very truly, George Kingfish Stevens. <clears throat> uh, exclamation point. Uh, type them up in triplets. I'll sign a copy later. Yes, sir. <laughs> Sorry, there were rattlesnake loose someplace in here. <laughs> Daphne, is you out there? No, I ain't. Oh, Lightning, listen. The secretary left a letter on the desk there. Bring it in here so I can sign it, will you? Okay. Yes, yeah, sir. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Lightning, you got the letter there. Yes, yeah, I got it right here. Hand me a pen over there so I can sign it. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Get the thing in the mail. Uh, yes. Yeah. Ain't you gonna read it, Miss Kingfish? No, get it in the mail. I ain't got time now. I got the mother over a big deal here. <laughs> See, you got my letter all right. 
I guess you got your cold in that suitcase there, huh? You bet your life I have. Well, you certainly took your time about getting here. Well, naturally. After all, I had to sell my farm, didn't I, Chucky? Sell your farm? Well, you think that was necessary? After all, I... Listen, when I got your letter, I didn't want to waste no time. I wasn't going to let nothing stop me. <laughs> After all, it's lots more exciting than raising chickens, ain't it? Big fish. Uh-oh. Excuse us, man. Meets you a bundle of joy. Yeah. From the sound of that cackle, I think she's got eggs in that suit. <laughs> <clears throat> well, Mitz, I reached a decision. I think you will do. Oh, wonderful! Wait a minute here. Now, wait a minute. Hold it. Uh, wait a minute. Things ain't this tough. I must say, you act awful strange for a man to propose marriage to me. Marriage? Why, uh, sure. I got your letter right here. I'll just read it to you. There's right here in this letter. Dear Miss Smith, I see your picture in a matrimonial... Uh, excuse me, I got to have another conference here. <laughs> this case right away. And I'll guarantee you I'll have this man Stevens in the fold in no time. Well, thank you. She's still parked out there. Andy, what is I going to do? This woman's following me like a bloodhound. Why don't you tell her that she was already married? Why don't you tell her the letter was a mistake? Did you create it? She'd have me thrown in jail for fraud, misrepresentation, arson, and everything else. <laughs> He ain't here. Oh, Sapphire. Joyce Stevens, why ain't you home? Well, uh, honey, I, I, uh, I don't avoid it, but he's detained here. I'll get home soon as I can. Can't be. You got to get out the back way. Holy mackerel. She got the back way covered, too. Now I know how Costa felt when the Indians were closing in on him. Oh, Andy, how was I going to get out of here? Say, you remember that New Year's Eve party we had last year? Yeah. <laughs> well, this ought to do it. Yeah. How do you do?
And that's hold up in my apartment until Henrietta gets this courage and goes back to Georgia. Yeah, that's one place you're going to be safe, all right, in your apartment. Well, she ain't got no idea where you live. Yeah, let's go to the diner and get some supper, then we'll go on home. Yeah. I'm so glad the traveler's aid sent you up here. I always left my spare bedroom with them. And I know you're going to be very comfortable here. You can stay as long as you want. Well, I don't know just how long it'll be. You see, I'm looking for someone. And I'm sure hoping to run into them soon. up this time of night, Doctor, but I'd like to make an appointment for the first thing in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, Sapphire, darling. Good morning, George. There'll be three of us for breakfast this morning, George. Three? Yes, the traveler day sent me a rumor last night. She's in the spare bedroom. Oh, they're fine. We can always use extra money, you know. <laughs> 
She's from out of town. She'll be in in a minute. I told her breakfast is ready. Her name is Henrietta Smith. <laughs> Breakfast is on the table. Good morning, Miss Smith. Good morning. Breakfast is on the table. Oh! <laughs> Miss Smith, I want you to meet my... Why, he must have ran out of here. The Stevens I know is part of Lana, too. <laughs> This is the worst mess have I done been in. That horrible woman renting our spare bedroom. You know, say, Andy, Andy, where is you? <laughs> Don't ever do that again, stupid. My nerves are bad enough already. Where's the old goat now? Well, I told my lawyer, Calhoun, to call her. She's over at his office. I told him to offer her her fare back, anything to get rid of her. I told Calhoun to be firm with her. Yeah, that Calhoun's a lion, all right. I bet there's some action going on up in his office now. Well, now, please, please, now, that's enough. Please don't hit me no more. I ain't been bothered. Get up, 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 Madam, will you kindly remove that gap from the back of my neck? I ain't no flounder. Uh, listen, madam, let's get back on a legal basis here. <laughs> point one, my client ain't never written you that letter in the first place. And point two, he ain't gonna marry her. So my good woman, my advice to you is to accept this car fare which he so generously offered you and get out of New York forever. Because let me warn you now and let me warn you again. If you ever so much as bother my client again, I is gonna joke on a fight. I'm gonna be bad disappointed. All right, that's better. If he ain't gonna marry me, all right, give me that car fare back to well, Georgia. Yeah, yeah. All right. all right. I'll get back to Georgia. All right. I guess I have to look for a husband someplace else. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Yeah. You is undoubtedly and absolutely the sneakiest little weasel and the poisonous cute for a man I've ever run into in my whole life. Goodbye. You wouldn't want to marry me, would you? Hey, Amos. Oh, how are you there, Andy? Uh, did you get Henry out on the train? Yeah, I got on there about 15 minutes ago, Andy. I guess that's a load off J.P.'s mind, all right. Oh, yeah, he really saw about it, too. Yeah? He saw that secretary of his, Daphne, for mixing up the letters. Oh. He's going over to the lodge hall now to give a piece of his mind. Oh, he is, huh? Told me he's going to say to her, Now, see, uh, if you can't do the thing right, I'm going <laughs> to... And furthermore, Miss Jackson, I won't tolerate no real of this. I'll excuse it this time, but in the future, make sure you know what you are doing. Look before you leap. Yes, sir. Look before you leap. That's right. That's going to be the motto around here from now on. And don't you forget it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Mrs. Stevens. Mr. Stevens just went in his office. Well, I'll see him in a minute. What I really come down for was to talk to you. Me, Mrs. Stevens? Yes, I want to apologize. I guess I did act a little jealous the other day, but I've been thinking it over, and I realized my husband would never think of looking at another woman. He knows by now what would happen if he did. Oh, yes, I understand. I realize... Excuse me. Yes, Mr. Stevens? Yes, Jackson. I hope you ain't gonna forget that advice I give you about looking before you leave. Remember that. Look before you leave. Oh, no, sir. I won't forget it. And another thing. Don't ever say nothing to my wife about me proposing to that woman from down in Georgia. <laughs> now, remember, don't say a word. Because if you do, there's no telling what might happen to me. Presented by Flat, Milwaukee's finest beer.
The Amos and Andy Show is shown to our armed forces overseas on film. <laughs>